What I'm going to talk about today is how to go from if you're struggling to coasting and from coasting to thriving. Okay. Now this all centers around the idea of power versus force. If you don't have food in your mouth, can you please say power versus force? Sweet. Now, the one question that you should be asking yourselves right now is, Evan, why should I listen to you? Okay? You guys should listen to me because of the one reason that I've done what you want to accomplish. Uh, I put 400 Medicare policies on the books in my first six months. I've only been doing insurance for two years. I'm a young man blazing his trail. In my first nine, year, uh, nine months of doing final expense, I wrote $200,000 were the AP, and within that nine months, I grew an agency that was doing that was doing hundred thousand dollars in sales per month. Uh, last year we did 1.2, 1.3 million, and so I've been able to train agents, and I know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, so the idea of power versus force is that the actions that you take in your business are going to fall under the category of power or force. All right. And being able to distinguish between the two is gonna allow you to level up your business, okay? So force is just, let's say you're a boat, okay? And you're a boat leaving the harbor. There's two things that you can do to get your destination. You can paddle, or you can put up the sail, okay? If you had to describe force, force is just like paddling, okay? And it's an additional, it, it works in the mode of, I guess you could say addition, in the sense that power is, like multiplication, okay? So when you take action in your business, something that is just an adding, adding action. I have a magical touch today. Because that other mic is right there? Yeah. Is it because this one's here? Yes. There we go. I like this one better. Okay. Uh, so force is just like adding, okay? So what's, the, what's an action that you do that's only adding, okay? When you're dialing, you're dialing one by one by one by one. You set appointment one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. An idea of power would be outsourcing your dialing in order to reallocate that time towards selling and things that you can't outsource. What's the one thing that you can't outsource? What's the one activity that you cannot outsource? You can't get well, they say sales? Yourself. No, you can outsource a lot of yourself. You want to outsource as much as possible. The one thing that you can't outsource is writing the application and doing the sale, right? So doing the scope and then writing the actual enrollment. Everything outside of that, you can outsource, okay? So in my business, for a long time, I was just dialing one by one, one by one, one by one. When you're dialing, what, what can you not be doing while you're dialing? Selling. You can't be knocking doors, you can't be doing policy maintenance, although we're gonna outsource that too. You can't be doing policy maintenance, and you can't be talking to clients, okay? <clears throat> so going from uh, force to power, we can outsource that, okay? If anybody wants a really good appointment setter, let me know. She's taking on two more clients, just hit me up uh, and group me. Her name's Janae, she's fantastic, and I can get you put in touch with her, okay? And so when you're struggling, you don't really have a rhythm. You went from zero to one in the sense that you took on the pursuit of becoming an insurance agent. You're now your own boss. You're working commission only. Nobody's going to pay you just to show up. You only get paid to perform. You get that. From there, you need to level up and you'd be able to not only coast, but eventually thrive, okay? To absolutely crush it in your business and really feel like the input that you're doing has a multiple output. You put in one, and if you're coasting, you get one. If you're thriving, if you're crushing it, you put in one, and you get back three. Okay, so your input is most effectively used towards your output. What's another activity that might be an example of force? You are in your food coma. How about doing policy maintenance? Okay, when you do policy maintenance, that takes time away from selling. So policy maintenance, you might feel like you're the only one that can organize your back books, your back office, feel like you're the only one that could uh, remember everything and go to my new details. Uh, I'm here to tell you it's not true. <clears throat> I thought the same thing until I hired somebody and trained somebody. And you can outsource that. And if they organize in a way that works for them, they organize in a way that works for them, you collaborate with them, you gotta figure it out. You just gotta figure it out. 
you've got to be able to outsource certain things to your business or else you're not going to be able to level up. People that are struggling, the biggest piece of advice I have for you is you just need to paddle harder. Okay? You guys haven't found your rhythm yet. You guys don't have a schedule. You don't have a rhythm. And it's always like, okay, how many leads do I buy? Okay, do I drop mail here? Okay, do I go out run appointments today or do I just take care of all the back office BS that I have to deal with? It's tough. The biggest thing between struggling and coasting is you haven't found your rhythm yet. You've gotta paddle harder, okay? You just gotta focus on those forceful actions. If you gotta dial one by one, one by one, one by one, you gotta put in $200 a day, $300 a day, you gotta do it, okay? I don't care if you're scared. Your kids don't care if you're scared. If you're a man in this room, your wife doesn't care if you're scared. I mean, she might give you a hug, but we gotta provide. We gotta put food on the table. And I'm saying this now as a 26 year old, being like, damn, when I get to 30, when I get to 35, 40, I don't wanna have to think about any of that. That's water under the bridge. I don't wanna have to deal with that. Uh, from what I understand and looking at you guys, I'm probably one of the youngest people in this room. So many of you have kids. How many have kids? Okay, I hate to say it, and I'm really not a person coming from authority here, but being a uh, person who only eight years ago was living with their parents, I can tell you, I don't care, Dad. I don't freaking care if you're scared. You gotta go out, you gotta make some money, you gotta provide. I don't care, sorry, but it's my livelihood. And if I have to be a self-centered person, whatever, but you're here to provide, my man. My mom's here to love me, my mom's here to care for me and everything, put me in diapers, whatever. But you gotta provide. So for the men in this room, if you're struggling, you gotta paddle hard. You gotta work your ass off. That wasn't a swear, that wasn't four letters, all right? <laughs> now, for those of you that are coasting, okay, I would say that most people here are coasting. Just because if it's a bell curve, most people are coasting, but also, you took the time to come here, all right? You have some sort of rhythm, and you have $100 in half a day to spend on yourselves training, and you guys obviously see the value in training, okay, and you're investing yourselves. To go from coasting to thriving, you gotta start outsourcing things, okay? Myself and my business, I've written probably three, 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 three between 300 and 350 policies since the first of this year, okay? How many dials have I made? Raise your hand if you want to guess. Zero. Yeah. Damn, yours are good. I haven't made a single dial. <laughs> I have not dialed the phone once as far as you know, booking appointments goes, okay? I, I, I don't spend any time on that. I don't spend any time in the office anymore. I gave up my office uh, because I was paying like, yeah, I was paying about 500 bucks for an office per month. I wanted to give that up and I didn't want to work in my kitchen so that I had to force myself, right, force? I had to force myself to not do any work that's in the office. Because we don't make any work, I mean, we don't make any money when we're working in the office, right? Who likes IPAs? <coughs> Nobody drinks beer here. Chad's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, brother. No, IPAs, income producing activities, right? The income producing activity, signing people up. You can't do, well, if you're running tele sales, it's fine. Uh, I myself, I'm not running telesales, I'm doing face to face the whole thing. All 400 apps, for, uh, telesales. I don't make any money when I'm in the office. So I had to force myself to get out. I had to force myself, I don't have an office to do anything like, uh, back office, paperwork. I'm not gonna eat in my car, so I need to go hire somebody to do that. I'm not gonna go dial, so I need to hire somebody to do that. And it forced me. Now I'm in the field five, six days a week, and I still have a day off. Right? I take Sundays off. But I'm in the field five or six days a week. And that's the best advice I have for somebody who's looking to book more appointments and ultimately help more people. Because if you're struggling, right, you're always like, me, me, me. You're always like, me, it's my microphone. It's my money. I need to make the sale for me, okay? If you're struggling, you're looking at me right now and you're like, oh, what do you have do, Evan? You know how to sell. But what about me? How can you help me, right? If you're going out there and thinking that, that's okay, but all you're gonna do is you're gonna help you. You're never gonna help anybody, well, you are gonna help other people, and not to the greatest extent that you possibly could. 
once you have your cup full, you can go out there and you can look at what I'm saying and what I'm telling you to go out and do increment producing activities. Yes, it's for yourself, but ultimately, when I put 400 people on the books, I helped more people than you. Ha ha. But I did. I was of more benefit to more people than you were. Now, I'm not saying that just to, I don't know what you guys did, right? But what I did, I, I did really well. And I'm going to continue to do really well. You guys want to do really well. Not only for you, but do it for them as well. It's a win-win, okay? To go from coasting to thriving, you got to put up that sale. And I don't mean S-A-L-E, S-A-I-L. You know what I mean? If you're a boat, you got to put up that sale and let the wind blow and you catch it, all right? Another form of uh, power, so multiplying, referrals. Asking for referrals. Another one, cross-selling. Okay? Can anybody else think of uh, another one? What's another form of power where you just have leverage, where you just multiply your input when you put it in? Food, coma. What's the ultimate form of power in this business? Please. Nope. It's a, really, it's a really good form of power, but it's not. Mm -mm. Recruiting. Okay? Getting people in your team to sell and you get overrides, that's the ultimate form. And you can outsource your sales. You don't actually need to sell anything because Matt's in business, but Matt haven't, hasn't sold the policy in how long, Matt? A long time. A while, right? But somehow he's still here and they're able to throw these, I was about to say parties, but throw these events, right? Have everyone think of it. So, selling. Did I just activate Siri? I think I just got Siri go. Okay. Kevin, could you turn that on? Thank you. So, uh, recruiting, okay? And the big one, you said it before, Melissa, leads, okay? How many people here, raise your hand if you're doing more than 30 leads a week? If you have 30, chat. 30 leads a week. You said you were struggling. That's, okay, we'll talk. That's okay. Nobody here, nobody else here is doing 30 more, 30 leads a week. Quality leads, how about that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. Quality. When you go over a thousand leads, it can be nothing, it can be one of the dark. No, 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 but how, how many do you, like, how many people here have 30 ordered, like, turned on? Direct mail. Yeah, direct mail. I'm at 30, not more. 30, 30 a week. 30, 30? Anybody, okay, anybody over 40? 50? Okay, okay. So, yeah, so if you want to, oh, that was good. Um, yeah, so as far as force goes, I mean, you guys just have to up your activity. What you guys have here is so, so freaking good. It's like cream of the crop. I came from an IMO where I was spending $2,000 a week on leads, and I did that for about a year and a half straight. So when I did my tax, I spent about $120,000, $130,000 on leads last year, which is a great tax write-off, but it was a huge expense, okay? The free lead program that you guys have here is absolutely phenomenal. And the cool part is that once you start hitting your strides, and after about a month or two months, you get put on the free lead program. And then from there, it's just how many leads do you want? You don't really have to worry about the money. Who here has hit that point where they're getting the free leads? <clears throat> free lead program, okay. Yeah, that is like your golden ticket to absolutely crushing this thing. Um, if I had to recommend anything for, if I had to recommend one thing just for somebody new that's getting started that wants to go from struggling to just coasting, if not thriving, put on, uh, put an order for more leads. I put on 60, 60 leads a week, which is 240 a month. And Brad and Matt can't keep up and they never, well, actually, they haven't hit that before. Uh, nine times out of ten, they won't, but still, I still get like 30, 40, 50 leads a week, which is fantastic, okay? What happens when that happens? Well, if I'm in the free lead program, I just got a bunch of leads in, and I got a bunch of money that's sitting in my binder that I got to go work. I got a lot of work that's right ahead of me for the next week. If I'm not in the free lead program, I just got billed $1,500, $2,000, right? Now, that's a blessing, because as humans, our fear of loss is much, much greater than our strive for greatness. Our ability to look at positive awards is negligible compared to the pain that we feel when we lose something, okay? I got a bonus check 
from America last year is the biggest like single check that I've ever had was a 10 grand, right? 10 grand, and I look at it, I'm like, oh, sick, okay, cool, cool. Okay, all right, cool. And then the other day I had like two clients cancel, and I was like, ah! It's like $400 compared to like 10 grand. And I'm, I'm asking myself like, something wrong with me? <laughs> like what the hell is going on? Why do I feel this way? Well, listen, we can't change it. It's part of being human. It's because we can be absolutely dead, right? That's a finite thing. It's black and white. You're either alive or dead. You'd be absolutely dead, but you can't be absolutely happy, right? It's not our genetics. So a lot of us are pro, actually everybody's programmed to play to not lose. Can you guys say play to not lose? Can you guys say play to win? Okay, you guys see the small little differentiation? My parents, through their entire life, played to not lose. And guess what? They won. Imagine that. You won the game, but it was a really shitty game. I don't wanna say shitty game because they didn't lose. They grew up, uh, they raised me in a stable household. Uh, we had enough money to eat. They probably made $100,000, $150,000 a year, which is cool. Uh, we had to think about if the car broke down, we had to get a new car. Uh, you know, they still had to look at price tags. We can only go on one vacation a year. And it was okay. We didn't lose. But I'll tell you what, it wasn't like having two or three houses as a kid. And who knows, maybe I, if I was spoiled, I wouldn't have turned down, I wouldn't have been able to value. That's a whole different argument. But my parents played to not lose. They had steady jobs, okay? And they are still working. My, my, my dad is, he turns 71 next week, and my mom's a 65, right? Perfect Medicare age, right? You sold Medicare. <laughs> I didn't, my dad. So that's a perfect segue. I didn't sell either one of Medicare. My dad has been doing insurance for 35 years. There's two things that he told me throughout my entire childhood, okay? He said, one, son, no matter what you do, if you're gonna have kids, get married. Get married first and do it in that order, okay? The second thing he told me throughout my child, entire childhood, and taking into account, I'm an only child, so all the intention is me, it's very deliberate. Are you an only child too? Yeah, I feel you. Second thing he told me, son, no matter what you do, do not do insurance. <laughs> my entire childhood, all right? <laughs> my mom was a recruiter. She said, son, no matter what you do, do not do recruiting. And what do I do? I do insurance and I recruit. <laughs> but it wasn't in spite of them. It wasn't in spite of them. I, I just really like it. I'm really good at it. Uh, but, you know, imagine that. Like, you're raising a kid, and maybe uh, many of you are raising kids. Imagine, like, telling your kid, like, hey, don't do what, I've, what I spend, like, 50 hours a week on every single week for the past 30 years. You know, like what, are you really, like, what are you doing? You have to start thriving. You have to start crushing it. I don't want that for my kids. I don't have any kids. I probably won't have them for another 10 years. You have to start crushing it. You have to be able to outsource. If you're working a job, a J-O-B, a just over broke, you can't outsource anything. You guys have a blessing here. You guys are your own bosses. You're 1099. You don't have the benefit of getting paid hourly. You don't have the benefit of just getting paid to show up. We do have the benefit here of being able to outsource a lot of our activities, and we can build a business, right? When I was doing life insurance and I was recruiting like a, like a mother lover, I had three full-time employees. I had three full-time employees to post on TikTok. I didn't know how to post on TikTok, so I had one girl. She worked 40 hours a week. All she did was TikTok. That's the entire thing. And that's how we recruited about $100,000 a month, which is pretty cool. I had another assistant just doing back office work, and I had a third one just doing interviews with people that were coming off of TikTok and other, um, I guess you call it lead funnels for recruiting, right? We have an amazing thing here. And the cool, the, I don't want to say cool, the bad thing about that is, well, I don't do it anymore for a reason. I don't, I don't like just building up a huge life insurance agency. I love Medicare. What you guys have here with the free leads, the coaching here, the ability to outsource, the ability to leverage your time, and your ability to build up a book of business. How many people here want to get to that $10,000 a month? Okay, everybody's hand should be raised, unless you're making more than that right now. That's okay, it's a food coma, I get it. 
you gotta, you have to be able, you have to be able to provide for your family, for all the men in here. Women, different story, different ball game. For all the men, there's no freaking excuse. Can I swear on here? <laughs> there's no excuse, all right? And I'm saying that before it even hits me. When that shit hits me, oh, sorry. <laughs> when that hits me, I'm gonna be ready. If you guys already have kids, if you're already behind the ball, you gotta start paddling. You gotta start paddling. And if you're already coasting and you have some sort of momentum, start outsourcing. Play the power game. Play the power moves. Leverage your time. Outsource everything that you possibly can. Get into the field and write 20 or 30 apps a week, okay? This is the last thing I'll say. The biggest thing for me that allowed me to un-F myself from my parents' mindset that they gave me, okay, the scripts that they gave me, the number one thing, and this is where my teaching kind of differs from a lot of people, if you go out on YouTube and you go to different trainings, you could find exactly what I just said. The biggest thing was meditation, and still is meditation to this day. My morning routine, I wake up, I do an hour of meditation, for 15 minutes I write down what I'm grateful for, and then I carry on with my day and I start the day and I crush it. I absolutely crush it. I'm really consistent. And it's not because of me. It's not because I'm anything special, okay? For a lot of you, compared to a lot of you, I had um, some obstacles that I had to overcome that you guys didn't. When I go in the home, people look at me and they're like, damn, a young guy? Can I trust him? Is he scamming me? I wrote $400,000 in 12 months worth of life insurance with long hair. You guys, I have short hair now, so you haven't seen that. I had long hair. I looked uh, from the back, I've been called ma'am before. If I was standing like this and you couldn't see, I've been called ma'am, and I had earrings, right? I go into a, a house, there's a lot of reasons that they wouldn't buy from me, okay? I had to overcome a lot of obstacles that a lot of you guys don't. Like, if you walked into a home and you had your shit together as a, pres uh, as a salesperson doing Medicare, I would think he's been doing it forever, right? For me, the max that I've been doing is a couple of years in their eyes. So anyway, there's a lot of obstacles that I've had to over overcome. <clears throat> the number one thing that's helped me is meditation. So if you haven't taken any notes now, write down one thing. Please, 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 please. And it's not going to make a difference to me. I'm just telling you this for you, OK? It's a website called Headspace, OK? Head, H-E-A-D, space.com, yeah. I've been using that every single day for the past eight going on nine years, OK? I've gone on three meditation retreats. I've probably meditated for five to 6,000 hours in total. I racked it up the other day. Um, a couple weeks ago, actually last week, I did a 10-day meditation retreat. Greatest, greatest thing I've ever done for myself. And it continue, will continue to be that way. It will continue to be that thing. And the last point that I'll make is that not only will it you know, unravel a lot of the limiting beliefs that you have, just in a very powerful way, you're not, you're not um, giving yourself an affirmation and just trying to overwrite everything. It just kind of deletes all the, all the muck over time. Not only that, but it allows you to embrace gratitude. And the number one thing that I don't see in people that are struggling is the gratitude aspect of what they have. And that's the number one thing that I want to instill upon you guys, is the more grateful you are, the more risks that you'll be willing to take, because you'll see what the next step has to provide. And you'll be more grateful. And the more risks that you take, the more you're going to be rewarded. And the more you're rewarded, the more grateful you are. Okay? What you guys have here is phenomenal. It's so good. So many people in this economy are struggling. And we get to build up a passive book of business, selling $0 plans to people that are on them anyway. And at the end of it, they're thanking us. It's crazy. Lots to be grateful for. Do it via meditation and do it for yourself. Not necessarily for me, not because I told you to. You'll get the hang of it. I love you guys. Thank you.